we often wonder what the afterlife has in store for us. Do we ascend to another world? Are we reincarnated into someone new, even something non-human? Or do we enter into eternal darkness, ceasing to exist in the fleeting passing of time? But what really happens to us after we die? For one Oklahoma outlaw, after death, there is more than just darkness. In the early 1900s, Elma McCurdy and his posse were looking for a quick score. They had heard about a train traveling from Oklahoma to Kansas, carrying over $400,000 in cash as a payment to the Osage Nation. Riding up on horseback, they jumped onto the train and were surprised to find that this was the wrong train. Going up and down the passenger cars, they emptied everyone's pockets. At the end of the hall, they came away with $46, two jugs of whiskey, and the conductor's jacket. The police were alerted and were soon chasing after Elmer and his gang. The gang split up, Elmer taking the jugs of whiskey and hiding in a hayloft. The police surrounded the building and a gunfight soon started. After exchanging rounds, Elmer McCurdy lay dead in the hayloft, a bullet wound to the chest. Elmer's body was taken to the Johnson Funeral Home in Pawhuska, where it remained unclaimed. Joseph Johnson uh, is the undertaker. He had like a, a furniture store and coffins and did embalming and things like that. So um, they get him into his office. He embalms him, does the autopsy, the original autopsy. People come in to identify him. You know, you've got, you've got Stringer for the railroad you got the county sheriff, you've got another guy that was a postal inspector. You know, they've got all this paperwork and they figure out, you know, who it is and identify him and, you know, uh, put in their records that he's dead. People in town and you know, around the region hear that, you know, he's got this dead body that's mummified, you know, because it's just been sitting in the back room and it finally just kind of dried out and um, turned into a mummy and people wanted to see it. And so they'd, you know, call him up, say, hey, can we come and look at the body? You know, we want to see this. And finally, he, you know, put, put the clothes, put the clothes that he had, he had been killed in back on him, and he stood him up in a corner of the office. And people, you know, for like date night in Paul Huska would go out and, you know, have, have ice cream and then go look at the mummy, you know. And so, you know, word gets out around that, that, that this is there, and people would come by and want to buy it. You know, and they were like, hey, we'd like to buy, you know, this body. And, uh, you know, he wouldn't sell it to him because he was like, well, I'm saving it for, you know, for the family. They can't sell dead bodies. What, you know, who does that? And so after, you know, like I said, about five years, a couple of guys come up and um, they're with a carnival. Uh, and it's, it's at a stop in Kansas, but they know that this body is there. So they come down and they're, they present themselves to be um, the brothers of Elmer. And they're like, hey, you know, our mom is dead and she wants Elmer back and she wants him to be buried with her, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And we're here to pick him up. And he's like, well, I don't, you know, how do I know that this is true? And, you know, I've got to have more proof than this, you know? And so they went and they swore out an affidavit with the city attorney and brought it to him and he released it. And within the week, he was, you know, a part of a, uh, a sideshow, you know, and people were looking at the mummy. And for the next 65 years, he was involved in sideshows, wax museums. Um, he was in a couple of movies. 1976, there's a, a TV show called The Six Million Dollar Man. It was really popular and, and you know, people all over the country watched it. I watched it when I was a little bitty kid. And, and so they were making an episode at the New Pike Amusement Park in Long Beach, California. And it was gonna be called The uh, um, Carnival of Spies was the name of the episode. And part of it was gonna be shot in a uh, fun house, the Laugh in the Dark fun house. And that was gonna be kind of the uh, command center for the Russians, you know, in this, in this story. So while they're setting up their shots, one of the guys bumps into this mannequin that's, that's um, you know, hanging from a noose, you know, from the you know, ceiling of the fun house. When he bumps into it, he knocks the arm off. So he reaches down, he picks the arm up, 
And when he does, he's looking at it and he notices that there's a, there's a bone sticking out of it. And so he went to his, his friends, you know, that were, you know, there working also. And he's like, you know, is this a bone? What do you guys think? And they're like, yeah, man, that's a bone. You know, it looks like a bone. So they go over to the mannequin and they start looking at the mannequin and they realize because, you know, this, this mannequin is, how should I put it? He's, he's painted red and he's painted with phosphorescent paint so that he glows when a light hits him, you know, kind of like the, the lines on a highway, you know, when you're driving at night and they glow. That's what Elmer did, you know, hanging from this noose. And he had no clothes on, you know, so here's this naked red thing that glows in the dark. And so they're looking at him and finally they, they kind of look really close and they're like, oh yeah, this is a guy. They take him into uh, the LA County Coroner's office and they proceed to do an autopsy on the body. Well, once they, once they have him on the table and they're looking at him, they notice that he has these Y incision on his, on his chest and belly where he'd previously been autopsied. And they're like, okay, that's weird. So this, isn't, this is a body that's known to someone. Somebody knows you know, who this is, you know, but how did this body get out into, into the public and how did it get into this fun house? and why was it hanging from a noose. Another thing they're doing when they're, they're doing the autopsy, they take off the, the lower jaw and they're gonna try to match dental records. Well, when they do that, their tickets start falling out of, of the mouth. Tickets and, and nickels and pennies and things like that. And so they look at one of the tickets and it says, um, the Lewis Sunny you know, Wax Museum. So they try to find him and of course, you know, at this point he's, he's passed away and they find his son, Dan, and they call him, and he's like, yeah, that's Elmer McCurdy. You know, we, my dad got him from Oklahoma. He loaned this man, you know, $500, and the, the mummy was collateral for this loan, and he, of course, never paid back the loan, so we kept the mummy. Well, some, some guys in Guthrie, Oklahoma, all right? One of them, his name is Fred Olds. He was the director of the Oklahoma Territorial Museum. Um, another is a man named Glenn Shirley, who was a, uh, a writer during the, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. He wrote, he wrote books about Oklahoma lawmen and outlaws. And then there was another man, Bill Lehman, who was the editor of the Guthrie Daily Leader at the time. And so they're talking about this, and Glenn Shirley's like, I know who it is. It's Elmer McCurdy. I have a file on him. This is what happened to Elmer. And this is you know, and uh, they said they, uh, that Fred got all excited about this. Like, well, we should bring him here. You know, he should come back to Oklahoma and we should bury him. So whenever they find Elmer and they bring him, you know, they get him back here to Guthrie, they do it to coincide with 89ers Day. And so they have this big funeral procession that goes through town, you know, and he's in this horse-drawn hearse. You know, it's got glass on the side so everybody can see it. They got people, uh, they got people leading the procession on horseback and they're carrying shotguns and, you know, they're dressed as cowboys and they got guns on their hips and, you know, everybody's just, just you know, completely involved in this, in this story or, you know, in this event. I mean, this is a big thing. So they drive, um, you know, they take him out to the, uh, to the to the cemetery, some of you cemetery, and they've got it. They've got the de you know the the grave dug. There's a there's a tombstone. He's going to be buried right next to Bill Doolin, and Bill Doolin is this you know famous outlaw from Oklahoma territorial times. And um, they get him out there. And the, the guys, the pallbearers, are, are the are the men that brought him here. You know that made the trip to California and helped identify him. And they're all like I said, dressed as cowboys and. They get him over to the grave, and and um, they have ropes, you know, like like you would uh, you know rope a cow with. Uh, that's how they lowered him into the into the ground, and <clears throat> then uh, um, you know the director of the Oklahoma Historical Society gets up and he reads this big speech that he had made about you know reconciling with with God and and. You know, just because you know this man did bad things in in uh, in his life didn't mean that he didn't deserve the respect of you know a Christian burial and you know just all this. And then they lower him into the into the ground and 
Everybody leaves and at that point, um, a, a cement truck comes up and dumps like three yards of cement on top of the, on top of the coffin, you know, because they wanted to make sure that in the future, no one would ever come and dig him up and exploit him the way he'd been exploited for the past 65 years. They wanted him to rest in peace. And so they did everything they could to ensure that that would happen.